Welcome to a brand new mini series on React. It's labeled four ways to manage form state in React. I've updated the uh, channel art over here and added some of the topics that I want to focus on in the future as well. So there's been a lot of focus on Docker and Kubernetes already. Um, a bit of Golang and React is also a passion of mine. So um, if you're new to front end development, and you're wondering how stuff works in React. This is sort of a, a, a talk or a share back that I've given to, to clients before because there's so many different ways to, to manage form state uh, in React. And um, because of that, you don't sometimes don't know what is the right way. So I want to show you these four different ways. Start today with part one, which I call the native JavaScript approach, or I don't know, React. And uh, this is a very simple version, very straightforward. And um, on all of these, these different four alternatives that I'll show you over the next four videos, I not just want to present how they work, but also give you a, a bit of guideline of when you should use what. So for this, I've created this tiny little React app and it's on GitHub. I've li uh, put the link in the description so you can uh, play along yourself. And this is what we want to do. And today we're starting with the native AT HTML like form. So here I've pre prepared a very simple form, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. Um, so if we were to click submit right now, it would do a hard page reload sort of work like an HTML. So let's check out the code for this form. It's a very simple HTML form in React here. So basically, uh, there's nothing React specific yet other than um, this form being a, a component that we export in the end. Uh, one thing that I did prepare, um, we're not using an HTML input element here, um, even though it would work exactly the same. So I've built a very, very simple, small helper component that you can look in here. And it's basically an input uh, just forwards all the props, but it also has an error message. So this is uh, relevant in part two of the series when we want to show uh, error messages as well. Uh, but for now, it works exactly the same way as if this was a native HTML element. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Any form in HTML uh, sends a standard uh, JavaScript event that is called the submit event. So what we can do is just use the onSubmit function of this form. So uh, we have a submit button. Um, so this will get triggered with the form's event state. So what you can do in here is call something like a function called handle submit that we don't have yet. So let's build that. Let's say const handle submit is a function that takes an event. And then with that event, we can do something. So um, at first, I think it might make sense um, to just put this in an alert. So in real life, you would probably send this to a remote API, but that's not what this uh, tutorial is about. It's just about managing form state. So for now, let's put this in an alert and let's try it out and see what happens. So here we have the form and let's put in my customer ID and try to submit it. And uh, what we get is object, object. Okay, so that doesn't help us yet uh, too well because we don't want object, object. But uh, what I wanted to show also is when I click this OK button now, notice that we're getting a hard page reload because that's the default behavior of how a form, how an HTML form reacts. And now we have um, the uh, form parameters attached here as uh, get parameters in the request. And that is not something we want to do because we don't want to reload every time. So what we can do to prevent this is use a method that's called exactly that prevent default, which is available on the event. So let's try that out. Let's put in my customer ID again, hit submit. Okay, we get our alert again. Ha, huh, and no reload, the URL doesn't change. Okay, so that's good. Cool. So now, of course, we don't want object object because that doesn't help us at all. So let's see what else we can do. So instead of object, um, which is the, the event object here. Every event has a target and this target has a value. So let's see what we have, what happens if we put uh, the value of the target here. So let's try again. Then we get undefined. Okay, that's interesting. So in this case, uh, let's not use alert, but let's maybe lock this into the console. And I think we should be able to see a bit better than what happens. So let's open up the console and it's actually undefined. Okay, so let's remove the value here and see what happens. Okay, so we get a form and a form does not have a value. Okay, so uh, we didn't we didn't handle an event like a change event on an individual field, but we handle the event for the entire form and that doesn't have a value, which means 
that we can go back and destructure this a bit more and get the individual input. And what we have here was called uh, customer hyphen ID. So if we get that, we should now be able to see the uh, HTML element. And from that, we want the value. And of course, customer ID is not valid JavaScript like this. So we need to do it like this. Cool, okay, let's try it again. And here we see the value. Okay, so now that we have the value, we can go back from console.lock to our alert and try our form again. And there we go, we have our value here. Cool. So that's one way of uh, getting a value out of a form and we could now send this to an API or whatever we wanna do. However, I don't think this is the best way. And that's why we have the other videos coming up. And here I've prepared a small uh, conclusions page. So what are the advantages? It's quite easy to use because you only have to know uh, JavaScript. There's no React specific knowledge required. Is it that easy to use? I don't know. And you've seen that there's um, a couple of couple of um, yeah ways where it can go wrong if you don't know the exact event structure. So uh, easy to use in a way that you don't know React uh, don't have to know React knowledge, but you do have to know JavaScript knowledge. But there are a couple of disadvantages. One is that we don't have any immediate kind of feedback whatsoever. We only got the feedback after we hit the submit button. And this is the first time that our value was processed. And that's really not what we expect from uh, modern uh, front end apps. So possibly we could have a bad UX because of this. When should you use this? Uh, I would say never, because it's really, there, there's not so much point in using React if then uh, you're not using uh, the React ways. However, it is sort of viable if you're just using a very, very minimal app. And if really you only care about the, the result at submit time and don't have to do any kind of validation and don't care about your user experience, but just want a minimal version and don't wanna care about how to do it properly in React, then this might be a good option. So this was, part one and part two will be about a controlled form. And this is what I would say is the idiomatic um, React way to, to use forms. And that'll be in the next video. See you then.